Today I have the pleasure to welcome Professor Ravindra Deer, who is one of the world leading scientists in concrete. And uh, I would like to pose some questions to Professor Deer in relationship to the use of fly ash in concrete. But at the very beginning, uh, Professor, what have been your main areas of research work at the Dundee University? I think it's quite important to also know that I've been at the university now doing research for 40 years and all along about 40 years my research has been in the area of concrete but it's equally important to mention that it is very much underpinned by the research in the fly ash area. What led to your specific interest in fly ash in concrete? When we started there were more technology and engineering base as to how the concrete performance can improve and what ash can contribute to concrete in terms of its durability, in terms of engineering properties. And then we found that all of a sudden the use of fly ash has a huge uh, sustainability uh, factors in it, uh, advantages, and now I say we like to think that how we can translate the sustainability, bring the sustainability to concrete through the use of fly ash and at the same time taking advantages of what it has to offer in terms of durability benefits, particularly in chloride environment, in marine environment and also under ground conditions and many other aspects of durability where it really has uh, quite a big impact indeed. Yes, what properties of fly ash affect the quality of concrete? If, I think with the passage of time what you're going to find is as people become more aware of what fly ash can do, they begin to see and understand concrete better, then there are many many advantages which they can derive from the use of fly ash in fresh concrete this will help them with the compaction, that will make the life easier for the workforce, it will give them good finish, so the start of the concrete will be that much better. Then I think as people realize what they can also, the kind of benefit they can get from the hardened concrete, uh, the long term strength when we move away from 28 day strength, I think there's a huge factor of something like 1.4 as opposed to the Portland cement clinker. So that advantage you need to be still exploited. But then when you come to the durability, it's all very much a free run situation. The chemistry of the fly ash is such that it offers lots of durability benefits, as I mentioned earlier, particularly in marine conditions and also the ground conditions. As you know, India is currently facing basically an explosion in fly ash generation. More and more coal fire power stations are coming on stream and more and more fly ash is generated from currently 150 million tons per year. We are expecting over a decade or more 900 million tons per year. Now there is a lot of so-called run of station ash available. What is your experience in terms of consistency of run of station ash? Well, that's quite an important question. It has been uh, an enormously big issue with, uh, in the UK situation. <coughs> the problem really is that all power stations are built for producing electricity, not for producing fly ash. Fly ash is the end product and always consider within the minds of these uh, power stations, people and others around them as a waste material which they could not be bothered with. It then produces a product which is hugely variable or it can be hugely variable and one will run the risk that one day you might be lucky, one week you might be lucky, one month you might be lucky, you're getting a good product. But suddenly you find, without announcing, without saying anything, that you have a product which is no good. And that can lead you, and I think I 
did show one of those examples in Bahrain seminar where the variation could be close to 80%, 100% on drift. Now when you have that and there is a major structure being built, you suddenly have now a poor concrete, you run the risk of having to either remove the whole of the concrete which has been cast because it has failed or you run the risk of having concrete which eventually will give you a problem. So if we are talking about engineering use, then it has to be engineering a correct material and it can only be engineering in terms of correct material when it is processed. How do you rate fly ash in comparison to other secondary cementitious materials like GGBS, microsilica and so on? That, that I think is slightly uh, difficult. Uh, first I think I can for your own comfort say that when I say that I have been doing research for 40 years, we have been looking at a large number of byproducts, not just fly ash. A silica fume, VGB as you mentioned, metacaolin I can add, limestone filler I can add. So number of uh, byproducts which we, are, we have been interested in. So I have a fairly good idea what each one offers and can do and can't do. But I think more importantly to answer your question uh, is that with, with fly ash, you have what are called facility to select at a level what you want and that selection range is very high. For example, I can start selecting coarse fly ash. I can start selecting a medium fine ash fly ash. And I can go to a very ultra, ultra fine fly ash. With that range of selection which it offers, there comes a range of applications which other materials cannot offer. For example, silica fume will come more or less at one fly ash, in a fineness. Your GGB as when you grind it, so environmentally it is not having the same advantage as the fly ash will have, but even so, your range is limited. How far you can grind because it will become very much unsustainable issue. So with the fry ash, as the, project, uh, as the product is produced, one has the facility of selecting the material at a level you prepare to invest. Uh, for example, uh, I know it, you know it, your P100 is a very fine material. And that offers what I call the facility for the product to be used in high kind of performance concrete. On the other extreme, you have a P10 product, which you still select it, which perhaps is not really good to be used as a cement, so to say, in the present world. Tomorrow it might be okay, but it can be used to improve the bad quality of sand which you produce in, certainly in Maharashtra or particularly in Mumbai, which I've seen very coarse, rugged, rough, tough, fly ash, no sorry, the sand, and if you mix it with the P10 kind of product which we are currently marketing, uh, that I think will improve the quality of fly ash, not the quality of the sand enormously. Are there any limitations to the grade and quality of concrete to be used with fly ash? You could go from the lowest strength to the highest strength, depending upon where you select it, what you process, and how you really try to prepare the product. I think what you're going to find in the in, in future is more and more emphasis has to be placed, and I think your company is doing it just about the right way, is, is the quality which is directed where the product is going to be used in terms of in the concrete. And I think that's the way to do, uh, to pr produce or to process fly ash, that you decide at which level of concrete is likely to go and your process is geared to it and you get the best for the two birds. Excellent. Professor Dia, I thank you very much for your advice. You're welcome. You're welcome.